Venezuela has more oil than any other nation on the planet. Hugo Chavez, its popular, outspoken president, has won landslide back-to-back -back election victories for the last 13 years. He spent billions of dollars helping the poor here. However, under his presidency, crime has spiralled out of control. 17,000 people were murdered here last year. Venezuela has become the kidnap capital of the world and one of the world's most corrupt countries. I've come here to try and understand how such an oil-rich nation has become one of the most violent on the planet. I'm about to spend time on Venezuela's front line. I see the devastating reality of a gun culture out of control and witness the shocking truth behind a prison system in free fall. In 1999, Venezuela's president Hugo Chavez came to power with a socialist dream. His aim to mend the crumbling infrastructure, stop government corruption, improve poverty levels and nationalize large parts of the private sector. But after 13 years in power, this oil-rich country is on the brink of chaos. Most crimes in Venezuela go unreported. 90% of all murders go unsolved. There are between 10 and 14 million firearms in circulation here, which roughly works out to one every other person. I've come to a police station on the edge of one of the most notorious slums in Caracas to find out how difficult it is to police the most dangerous capital in the world. Caracas has a population of just over 3 million. Most live in the poor and dangerous barrios that wind through the city like a serpent. This disused sports hall is the main police station outside of Patari, and it covers an area called Sucre. And basically, there are 1,100 police officers here to police a community of 1,700,000 citizens. That works out to around 1.5 police officers per 1,000 members of the public, and that clearly isn't enough. The other problem they face here is an increasing murder rate. Um, when Hugo Chavez first came to power, there were around 4,000 people murdered that year. Last year, it was estimated that 17,000 people were murdered in Venezuela. To get a better understanding of what it's like to police this dangerous city, I'm going on patrol with the quick reaction team. It's a tough job being a policeman here, as they are mistrusted and frequently targeted. Esto es peligroso como casi está en una guerra. Y aquí han matado aproximadamente entre 60 y 50 policías solamente en Caracas por año. Por año. Por año. The police are outgunned. Drug money allows the criminals access to just about every high-powered weapon on the market. But also, Chavez has restricted them to carry only small arms. He did this as a punishment after the police attempted a coup against him in 2002. This not only prevents them from rising against Chavez again, but also puts them at a serious disadvantage when trying to tackle criminals. Mate, you try and get anywhere here, it's just impossible. Just 10 minutes into the patrol, and we are called to an emergency. Uh, we're on our way up into Batari. Uh, they've just had a radio call come through that um, a bunch of vigilantes basically have located a criminal and they're going to take him out of his house. They've broken into his house, they're going to drag him out. They said lynch, and I thought, what, well, you're going to hang him? They said, no, what they do is they cut him to pieces with machetes and then they set fire to them. There's no evidence that the body was ever there. There's already been two shootings, two people have been shot uh, because they were. Well, they basically had the motorcycles taken from them. They wouldn't hand them over, so they got shot. Dice que todo eso motorizado está saliendo, se están yendo porque está llegando la policía. Supervisor is basically saying that these are the people that were going to lynch the uh, the guy that's been stealing motorcycles locally, but they've heard the police are on their way, 
So they've uh, decided to uh, to run away. Si no hubiesen llegado los policías, lo más probable es que lo hubiesen matado. Apparently, the uh, the motorcycle stealer, for want of a better word, he was uh, seeking refuge in that little shanty house there when he was surrounded by apparently 60 guys on motorcycles. Um, he fired a couple of rounds back. He kind of climbed across the roof spaces up here, firing rounds and made his way onto the road up there. So at the moment, well, I said to the police, what happens now? And they said, ciao. So bye, baby, bye. <laughs> Y esto es uno de los barrios más peligrosos que tenemos en Caracas por las ventas de drogas y las grandes cantidades de homicidios. ¿no? Se enfrentan bandas de un, de un lado y del otro. Acá aproximadamente pueden haber cinco o seis bandas. Cada una domina un territorio, domina un sector. Si una banda de un sector invade el territorio de la otra, ¿okay? eh, le disparan. ¿okay? Y ahí es donde vienen y se ocasionan los homicidios. El policía en nuestro país muere en tres circunstancias. Él muere más fuera de servicio que en servicio. Es la primera circunstancia. La segunda circunstancia en la cual muere, él muere a corta distancia. ¿Okay? Y la tercera circunstancia en la que muere, muere mucho eh, en vehículos de transporte público, vehículos particulares. Nuestro policía gana muy poco dinero y como gana muy poco dinero, vive en medio de los delincuentes. Acá viven muchos policías. One of the things that the public Minister for Information went on the record and said that he believed that for every five crimes a policeman was involved in one of those. How do you answer that accusation? Este, yo pienso que eh, no, sus datos no fueron asertivos, ya que por supuesto no es un secreto que dentro de las policías eh, hay hombres que son también delincuentes, pero es la excepción, no es la mayoría policías que secuestran, hay policías que extorsionan, hay policías que cometen homicidios, pero no son la mayoría. ¿okay? La mayoría de los policías son hombres dignos, son hombres trabajadores que ganamos muy poco. There is little doubt that Venezuela is caught up in a crime epidemic. Supervisor Jerez is passionate about the problems his men face. However, with a reputation for being trigger happy and corrupt, the people living in the barrios describe the police as just another criminal gang. Somebody is murdered in this country every half an hour. 94% of those are killed with a firearm. We've come to the Perez de Leon Hospital on the outskirts of Patari, the largest slum in Caracas. <laughs> been here a matter of minutes and it's uh, well it's just come up to five to nine and uh, already uh, there's two gunshot victims have just been brought in both look unconscious and it's Friday night that's when it spikes it's Friday and Saturday night are the worst nights for homicides in this country The information we've just been given is that the, uh, the young man that's been shot in the head here and that was his wife uh, have both been killed. They were robbed and he's actually a police officer. So they've been killed approximately 10 minutes ago. It's 10 to 9 on a Friday evening. So they were, they were shot and robbed. It took just seconds to take these two young lives, leaving a lifetime of grieving for the friends and family. Then amongst this chaos, we're faced with a surreal situation. News of our filming has reached military intelligence, who show up to try to stop us filming. They're concerned that we're going to show Chavez and his administration in a poor light. It seems that the harsh reality of living in this country is something the government does not want to be revealed. Absolutely. 
But yeah, but also, if you cannot show other people's pain, how can you explain to other people the pain that they go through? After much negotiation, they decide to leave. Meanwhile, the victims continue to roll in. So a lady's been shot in the leg, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So this is the third, the third gunshot wound. Yeah. And it's now, what, half nine. So you've had basically three people, two dead, and someone's shot in the leg and it's only half nine. So that's happening like half an hour, really. How often does this happen on a Friday night? Friday or Saturday is the worst days. Maybe 20, 25 gunshots every shift. We are seeing double the patient on the last year. So it's doubled yeah, we're in a doubling year. The numbers. And, that, and that's all gunshot yeah. wounds, yeah? 50%. The, the, the previous two, the ones that were dead on arrival, that looked to me like a hit. He's a police officer. He's been shot in the back of the head. His wife's been shot in the side. Looks to me like that wasn't a robbery. It looks yeah, to me yeah, like yeah. that was, a, that was a, a hit, yeah? Yeah. Most of the dead people come from gangs fighting. Mm -hmm. We have, in average, maybe 25 dead people to 35 every week just here in this county. And you, obviously you have one of the worst barrios in the whole of Venezuela. Yeah. But we have been increasing on the wounds and, shot and gunshots in the last two months it's gone all over the country. So we are trying to figure out what's going on. We have a jail strike, like, three months ago and some of the people in the jail just break the jail and they are all over a lot of people were just walked out of prison yeah yeah, yeah. so they but are since that's happened since those people have got out of prison there's been a massive increase in the amount of people yeah. being shot there, there is an increase in the, the people every week in the last month or so in 2011 the minister for prison stated that she would reduce overcrowding by releasing 40 percent of the prison population Subsequently, crime rates soared. I watch on hopelessly as an under-resourced hospital tries to cope. When you think about just how much money there is in this country, how much mineral wealth there is, how much oil there is, uh, certain things are just not stacking up for me here. Um, you know, the hospital is clearly under-resourced. There are so many people that have come through its doors tonight suffering from gunshot wounds. And I've never been in a hospital and seen that many people come through that have been shot. But is this it's supposed to be some kind of utopian socialist dream? All I've witnessed so far is a nightmare. But at the heart of this bad dream are the prisons themselves. I'm going inside the notorious PGV prison home to criminal networks who not only control the prison system, but also the streets of Venezuela. Nowhere is the collapse of law and order in Venezuela more apparent than in its prisons. In a recent prison riot, inmates amassed enough firepower to hold off the army for a month. When the authorities finally gained control, they found grenades, submachine guns, and 45 kilos of cocaine. The prisons are lawless, guarded from the outside by the National Guard and run by the prisoners on the inside. Murders are frequent and go unpunished. Last year, 560 inmates were killed. I've been granted unprecedented access by the Don of this prison. He's an inmate called Leo who controls everything and everyone within this prison republic. Leo, can you tell me how many inmates there are in this prison? For many people outside of this country, they would be shocked to know that there are no prison guards inside here and that you ultimately control the security, the food, and virtually everything that goes on here is under the supervision of the inmates. Is that the way it's always worked in the prisons here? 
No, 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 todo era distinto. Antes la Guardia Nacional no estaba aquí adentro, pero sí pasaba en la mañana y en las tardes a pasar números, pues. Pero de un tiempo para acá, nosotros mismos, ya nosotros mismos tomamos el penal completo, sino que nos respeten nuestros espacios. Y eso viene hace como de cinco años para acá, que ya las autoridades no están aquí adentro en el penal, pero sí en su área de trabajo. ¿no? Eso es así. So those people carrying guns to protect themselves from other people inside here, or are they carrying them to protect themselves from the National Guard on the other side of the fence? Bueno, amor, mira, el, nosotros tenemos las armas, el sábado no porque te estoy diciendo que es el día de visita, pues. hoy porque es un día de rutina, un día normal, así como cualquier día, pero hoy la tenemos, así la tenemos nada más, si la tenemos es para cuidarnos de las autoridades, porque hay muchas cosas que, bueno, han venido y nos han hasta masacrado, pero nosotros no vamos a permitir eso, pues. ¿me entiendes? Por eso que nosotros las tenemos, y cualquiera cosa, cualquier que se quiera volver loco o dar un cambio de gobierno como dice aquí uno entonces por eso que la tenemos pues para salvándonos de nuestras vidas bearing in mind that 17,000 people were murdered in Venezuela last year are you actually safer being here rather than outside eso sí es verdad uno está más que cuidado aquí que en la calle porque en la calle la inseguridad está demasiado satada y entonces están matando a todos pues there is little doubt that Leo is Caesar. He is surrounded by armed bodyguards. As with all leaders, there is always someone lurking in the shadows. After all, crime is big business. If someone is kidnapped in Venezuela, more often than not, the negotiations are handled by a crime boss doing time. This may appear like Disneyland for criminals, but your chances of survival here depends on two things. Money and who you know. So just, just to explain now, with, with Leo, there is a prison within a prison. These people are the, the unwashed. These are the people that are not considered good enough to go beyond this point here. Um, and I'm looking at the conditions there, and this is just like, this is like leaving Switzerland, and we're just about to enter hell. Hades. Stepping into the untouchable side of the prison, I get a real sense of utter despair. The chemical smell of crack and the stench of rotting human effluent permeates the air. Most are unwell, malnourished, and some clearly have mental health problems. We've just come upstairs into the worst part of the prison. What's interesting for me now is his bodyguards have definitely got the weapons out, which uh, is an indication to me is that this isn't the safe bit of the prison. To end up here, these men have been deemed of no use to Leo's prison republic, or they have broken its strict rules. If they should try to gain access back to the other side, they would suffer a severe beating or could even be killed. And, and who makes the decision, Leo, that, that when someone comes into this prison, that they end up in this side rather than in the good side? No, no, no. Eso ya nosotros tenemos ya con los Gonzalo. Los que no sirven, como nosotros lo llamamos en el ámbito de nosotros, los que no sirven, que no pueden vivir con nosotros, los hombres serios, no ya tienen que refugiarse para este lado. Nosotros tenemos una iglesia de aquel lado, una iglesia que ahí viven gente que, como de aquí, que se haga algo, una cosa que no es individuo, lo meten hacia la iglesia para que se medio relaje y se quede tranquilo. The conditions here are so appalling, it's impossible to imagine how bad the church must be. How many people would actually try to sleep in this place? And is that why many of them are sleeping now? Because they just can't sleep at night? No, no, se toman turno, duermen todo, pero duermen amorochado. Entonces, para que duerman tranquilo, tienen que guindar sus cosas arriba. It's like insects in the <laughs> cocoons, it's like butterflies in the cocoons. I don't smell as sweet, unfortunately. Um, the smell is something, you know when you can smell rancid uh, sewage. It's sewage that's not been able to float away or get away or be washed away. That's what this place deals with. With no sanitation, 
Human waste is simply thrown out through the bars where it rots in the tropical heat. Leo, one question I have to ask is, how many of these people have actually been convicted and how many are, are awaiting to be tried? And if they're, if they're waiting, how long have some of these been, people been waiting and will they ever get out? That's a process. ¿Me entiendes? Ese es el proceso, porque ahí así como hay arrematado, hay procesado. Entonces hay que esperar el juez, el abogado de que le mueva sus trámites por allá por la calle para que lo puedan llamar para los tribunales o que esté procesado, que le toque su beneficio, que se pueda ir para la calle. Ese es el proceso de, bueno, no es todo, porque me voy a incluir yo porque estoy preso igual de todos. Clearly, having money inside a prison helps. Obviously, these people here, they have nothing. I mean, how do they feed themselves? How do they, how do they survive here? No, no, yo solo bien porque todo, este, aquí hay un comedor, ahí que le hace la comida a toda la población. Y le traen su comida, le reparten su comida, porque no es porque tenga plata, no es, no, no. Ellos están así porque el consumo de, de su químico y su cosa lo lleva a esto, a lo que están ahorita, por aquí, pues. Where are you from? Yeah. London, where are you from? London, Holanda. You're a Netherlander. <laughs> okay, they think pretty to me. Yes. How comes you are here? Ooh, at, uh, six years, six years before. Six years? How did you end up here? For drugs. Trafficking, yeah? You were sentenced for how long? Eight years. What's it like? Oh, very bad. Hell? It's in hell over here. And how is your health? You're not well? No, the embassy do, do nothing over here. What, I mean, just, just tell me, what, what's your day-to-day -day existence like? I mean, do you get enough food? Yes, I do, do you know, I must uh, work for my food. You work for your food, so yeah. you, you fix things and then you get food, yeah? Yeah, and, no. I, and I do never again. You'll never do it again? No. What were you trying to traffic? What were you trying to, what drugs were you taking? At the uh, cocaine. Cocaine, yeah? Where were you taking it to, to Amsterdam? Yes. Yeah, how old were you then? 20 years. I'm a child. You're a child. You're not a child anymore, though, are no, you? No, 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 no anymore. But when I was 20 years. And what about your family? How did your family feel? I call my family much. You but, can when uh, you can. Uh, they send me money. Yeah. Clothes, shoes. Yeah. What I need, but I need uh, the embassy to bring me outside. Thank you very much. Eh? Thank you. God bless. I thought the prison that I entered originally was pretty appalling, but I was not prepared for what I've just witnessed. Um, Hugo Chavez himself said that the prisons in Venezuela were the gateway to the fifth circle of hell. The people in there have no hope, and literally, they're just waiting to die. <laughs> it's impossible to list the number of human rights violations I've witnessed in this prison. It's highly questionable how anyone can be rehabilitated or could ever be part of normal society should they ever be released. It's not surprising this prison often erupts into violence as there are all types of weapons and plenty of narcotics. Um, and you see this all over the prison, basically, um, you know, it's crack cocaine here and powdered cocaine, and marijuana, and you can, uh, you buy it off him and you can even use his pipe to smoke it. <laughs> the main business here is selling drugs. At the weekend, Prison visitors can buy any amount they want and take it back outside with little fear of being searched by the guards. Okay. It's rumored that some of the guards are either in on the deal or they're too terrified to stop it happening. So in my hand is uh, some crack. That's uh, $1.20. So it's around about 50, 60, 70 pence. And 
marijuana. It's about two pounds for that, but apparently it's incredibly, incredibly strong stuff. Not that I'm about to find out, because I'm too paranoid already. Leo's cell is luxurious and confirms who has ultimate power in this prison. We know that President Chavez has put millions and millions of dollars into the prison system, but it's, it's been up to you guys, the inmates, to improve the prisons here. That money seems to never have arrived. Um, that down to the people that work for him. Do you think that the people that should have instigated the changes here should be held to account? Mira, una de las cosas que uno se viene viendo hace mucho tiempo, que el presidente Chávez siempre da para la humanización en las cárceles, pero ya son cosas que lo que tiene a la costilla, que conchale, ellos ya él tiene que poner punto en asunto, porque en realidad si todo lo que tú viste aquí, eso lo nosotros nos sale de nuestro bolsillo y el aporte que pone cada uno de interno, 20 bolívares semanal para tener nuestro para nuestro penal porque mientras que estemos viviendo aquí es nosotros. You'll be getting out of here in a year's time. You have a little baby on the way. You already have two other children. Um, while you're in here, you're very much protected out on the streets. It's not going to be so easy to protect you. Are you worried about being hurt when you leave here? And also, do you think you may have to return to prison? Bueno, el día que me vaya para la calle, eso es que tengo que reintegrarme en la sociedad, que yo estoy dispuesto a reintegrarme en la sociedad. No estar con chale, no me quiero ser carne de presidio, como dice uno. Y de regresar aquí a este lugar, con chale, no lo voy a decir que nunca, que no, porque uno no sabe cuándo le vuelve a pasar otro, otra cosa a uno y uno tiene que volver a, a pagar a delito lo que está, pero... Quiero, quiero, coño, quiero rehacer mi vida en la calle y estar tranquilo y olvidarme de muchas cosas porque son casi 10 años presos, privado de libertad. De los 18 años presos no, no he disfrutado nada. Y si no, Dios me da vida bastante para disfrutar en la calle, lo voy a disfrutar. Y si Dios me tiene resguardado aquí es por algo. Propósito más adelante me tiene Dios y bueno, y estoy capacitado para presentar ese propósito que me tiene Dios en la calle. Blind faith may help, but to survive here, you have to become part of the system and all that entails, which ultimately means committing crimes against others and the state. So far, I've witnessed a police force under pressure, a hospital trying to cope, and a failed prison system. Yet despite all this, Hugo Chavez is still regarded by his people as a champion of the poor and has unrivaled popularity. To get a better understanding of Chavez's appeal, I arranged to meet up with Vladimir Sanchez, a staunch supporter of the government and brother of the renowned terrorist, Carlos the Jackal. What exactly is the Bolivarian Revolution and what is Chavez trying to do to Venezuela? Chavez is trying to transform a traditional capitalist society that existed up to 1998 and to a certain extent still exists uh, into a more humane socialist society through peaceful methods. What was the situation before he became president? Well, great levels of uh, poverty, uh, a great inequality. Gap, a great gap between the Definitely. And the, the gap between the rich and the poor was getting uh, wider as time went by. So, um, and this could be seen in, in the health indicators, uh, food consumption, education, housing. So turning this around is a huge feat. Vladimir was keen to show me where some of the billions of dollars have been spent. These are two types of clinics that assist the population. You come here and have free exams, free x-rays, you get free medicine. And this is what the middle class don't understand when they try to go against Chavez. This is so fundamental. This works 24 hours a day. But despite his good deeds, Chavez has made many enemies. Conspiracy theories abound. One of the most common but unproven is that the US government has sent Colombian drug gangs into the barrios to destabilize them. It, it's a very cheap way 
for Chavez's opponents worldwide to get at him. So you infiltrate these groups into the poor areas and then they create havoc. No foreign government is officially involved in this, but everybody in the barrios knows who their violent groups are and they know that the new violent groups have nothing to do with the local population. This is a, a new housing development that the government is doing for the refugees. And that building you see there in front of you, that's a new development made by the government also. So the government is trying to give new housing opportunities to these people who used to live in, in shanty towns, and now they're trying to build these houses and these apartment blocks. And here you have a cable car system that allows people not to walk up 600 to 800 steps every day with uh, groceries, with everything they need to carry to get up into their homes in the barrios. This is something that the opposition will not talk about. This costs a hell of a lot of money. There is no doubt that Chavez has helped the poor since taking office. But corruption here is endemic. Often funds never reach those who need it. And now with growing speculation over his health and with no obvious successor, the Bolivarian revolution is under threat. The president has been ill with cancer. Everybody says and everyone hopes that, that he's over it. If he's not, and he, and he dies, what happens to Venezuela? Well, I think there would be an uncertain situation for the country. Chavez has been instrumental to maintain peace in our nation over the past 13 years. And it's very much about one man, isn't it? Yes, evidently. He has been uh, the un undisputed leader of this revolutionary process, of this peaceful process of transformation. And to envisage this process without Chavez at this present moment is highly difficult. If he does die, what will be his legacy? Having transformed this country, definitely, we will never go back to what we were before. Even if he were replaced by a right-wing government, even if they were to come and try to change things violently, the seed of Chavez's process of change has been, has been well planted. And this population will never accept going back to what we were before. Venezuela's problems aren't just confined to Caracas. As part of the Bolivarian Revolution, land was taken from the rich. It was then divided and given to the poor. But there still remains a huge economic divide between the haves and the have-nots. Today, a growing problem for Venezuelan's elite is the fear of kidnapping, which is reaching epidemic proportions. The aim of the Bolivarian Revolution was to redistribute wealth to the masses. It's had some success, but there's still a large divide between the haves and the have-nots. For the poor and desperate, crime has become a way of life. One of the most lucrative ways to make money is to prey on the rich. We're on our way to meet one of the estimated 18,000 criminal gangs that exist here in Venezuela. Many of them specialize in kidnapping, a crime that's rising faster here than anywhere else in the world. Last year, over a thousand people were held for ransom. Kidnapping rates have increased by over 400%. Two to three kidnappings happen every day. We've arranged to meet a gang of kidnappers in a secret location, high up in a barrio on the outskirts of the city. How do you guys earn a living? How do you put food in your family stomachs? <laughs> in reference to kidnapping, um, can you Talk to me about the process of how you go about it. 
and, and most importantly, I guess, how you exchange uh, the person for the money without getting caught. Primero, estudia a la persona así, siguiendo dónde trabaja, con quién vive, estudiándola como quien dice de adentro y de raíz, pues. Tratarla de agarrarle la caída en ese procedimiento que la estás estudiando en la caída más débil, pues, en lo que pague como quien dice la, 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 donde esté el momento más papayito no la atrapa. Tercero, la, las caletas son partes donde montañosas, pueden ser sitios muy alejanos a la civilización para que nunca la encuentren. Llegan las 78 horas, las 74, las 72, que ya ustedes en el combo se reúnen, mira la señora, tiene tanto, lo azotamos o lo dejamos. Si de repente uno acepta lo que ella no vaya en cantidad, uno busca el sitio donde uno va a hacer cobre, parte lejana, estudia el carro, estudia todo, todo, todo de fondo también, cuando se vaya a hacer rescate. X, no pagan, o si pagan, o pagan y están montados con los PTJ, las personas que están secuestrando automáticamente se le quita la vida. The average express kidnapping lasts a couple of days and carries a ransom of around $5,000. Kidnapping a higher profile victim can make thousands more. I want our audience to have some understanding of just how violent your lives are. Can you give me any indication as to how many people that you've killed? <laughs> <laughs> muy largo porque cada quien por lo menos este ha matado una parranda de gente como no lo mata él lo puedo matar yo yo he matado una cantidad de gente que por lo menos cuando no lo mato como quien dice encausado como quien dice con él con él con él con él con él o con cualquiera de los demás compañeros he matado una cantidad de personas como robando como problema como x que yo yo a mi a mi conciencia que yo tengo ni siquiera ni me acuerdo pero he matado por de personas. Eh, eh, nosotros en estos días estamos hablando así los muertos que conocemos este año, que hemos matado los cada año, van como 50, ¿viste? Hablando de claro. De, 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 de como año, dice, de conciencia, de claro. Lo que va de año, así de todo junto, lo que hay año. Do you think this will just stay the same way? And what do you think about your future? Will you stay where you are, in the group, in the gang? Or will you try and get out eventually? Y yo no, antes no cargaba una pistola para arriba. Es más, cuando decís, no me gusta el villaneo, no me gusta robar, no me gusta secuestrar, ¿verdad? Y también quiero surgir por otra parte, pero aquí, aquí, aquí donde estoy viviendo, yo no puedo soltar esta pistola, ¿ah? Porque me tumban la puerta y cuando lleguen, me van a matar. Yo no, que se, yo no, que no me gustaría que mi hijo me diera un ataúd. So this is a, a sort of safe house, a place where the gang can come and hide out if uh, if it's going kinetic, if it's going bing, bing, bang, bang, yeah? De ocho a siete pistoleros duermen aquí. Ocho, eight people. Ocho, ocho personas duermen, mientras que los demás compañeros se quedan en la garita, cuidándonos que no se metan los problemas, ni los policías, ni cosas así, pues. Aquí es donde dormimos todos. Ahí están colchones, colchonetas, sábana, ropa. It, it's good business, huh? You've got to bring them back sort of in the state that you took them, otherwise it's bad, bad for business, huh? Claro, sin maltratarlo, ni mucho menos. No le dan cuidado. Claro, tan como quien dice, privado de libertad con uno, porque uno quiere el dinero, pero así como uno lo priva de libertad, uno trata de cuidarlo, ¿entiendes? La única forma en el sentido que uno lo maltrate en el sentido que las familiares llamen a cuerpos policiales y quieran interceptar con uno o atraparlo a uno y uno llega a la decisión y lo saca del sitio donde uno los tiene para otro sitio para matarlo. Lo deja tirado por una autopista o X, pues. Do you seriously think that you can carry on doing this? And are you not concerned that you will get killed? Porque yo, usted piense que yo pueda seguir en esta vida. Es muy fuerte. En realidad es muy fuerte. Demasiado problema. Porque cuando yo busque manera de, como quien dice, guindar los guantes, relajarme, puede ser la, la, la manera que me maten. Entonces, a mi criterio y a mi mente, tengo que seguir con mi vida si quiero guardarla, si quiero vivir un poquito más. La única manera de poder yo salvarme es que me vaya bien lejos donde nadie me conozca, 
y nadie me vaya a quitar la vida. Basically, what he's shooting at are the shoes of one of the guys that he actually killed. Uh, he shot two guys just around here who came in from the opposing barrio. And um, I've seen the, uh, the photographs uh, of the two dead bodies. Um, I don't think they're making it up. Uh, and uh, just to show the other barrio that they killed two of theirs, um, uh, they've thrown their, uh, their shoes over the, uh, the power lines there. It's very easy to forget sometimes that you know, these men, you know, as they said, they live by the lead and they die by the lead. These people are incredibly poor. Um, there's no social services to look after them. And I'm no way am I condoning the ac their actions, but you have to, to ask, you know, what else do they have? Um, and for me, again, you know, it comes back to this thing that continuously hits you in the face here, is there is so much wealth here, there is so much money, and you've still got people who are, who are starving and fighting to survive and kidnapping to survive and murdering to survive. Looking back, I'm shocked at the state this country is in. The pointless murders, the abuse of human rights. For a socialist country with so much wealth, there is still so much inequality here. Whatever the future holds for Hugo Chavez, he will always be remembered in the barrios as a champion of the poor. But it staggers me that such a wealthy, intelligent country that helps out others with subsidized oil should have such a fragmented infrastructure and a crime rate that is out of control. It seems to me that everything hinges on one man and one commodity. And if either of them should fall, the country would be plunged into chaos. Hugo Chavez's political opponents may or may not play games with the crime statistics, but the simple fact is this. A country blessed with such natural resources should not have a population living in constant fear. You can see Ross come in face to face with armed Venezuelan kidnappers and hear the crew talk about filming inside the prison at sky.com slash Ross or find it on demand now. And in next week's all new Extreme World, Ross is exploring issues a little closer to home as he heads to Glasgow.